Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Rahul's Medicine. Now in this video, we will talk about Zollinger Ellison Syndrome, uh, disease of the GIT tract. Now before starting this topic, I want to tell you something. Uh, now in this YouTube video series, uh, I have started making a video on a topic uh, which are quite frequently asked in the exams. And my aim is to simplify the complicated topic. Okay, uh, and I will also ask you to uh, write down in the comment box the topic which you feel that tough and the subjects uh, which you want that I should make a video on it. Uh, your suggestions are also most welcome in the comment box. Okay, now let's move to this disease part. Now, in the Zollinger Ellison syndrome, the first thing that we should know it is that it is also called as the gastrinoma. It is also called as gastrinoma. Okay, now why it is called a gastrinoma? As this disease is arise from the G cell. This disease arises from the G cell, and from our physiology days, we know that the G cell is responsible for the production of hormone, which is called as the gastrin. Okay, so what will happen in the Zollinger Ellison syndrome, or we can say gastrinoma? There will be an increased level of the gastrin. There will be an increased level of the gastrin. Now, what this gastrin will do? This gastrin will stimulate the parietal cell. It will stimulate the parietal cell. and this parietal cell will increase in the number okay and we as we all know this parietal cell is responsible for the acid production okay so the acid production will be increase so level of hcl will also be increase in the body okay so we can say that in case of gastrinoma there can be a condition which is called as the hypergastrinemia hypergastrinemia okay <clears throat> and there can be a due to the hypergastrinemia or increased level of gastrin there will be a hyperchlorhydria 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 means there will be increased level of the hcl okay now whenever there is a increased level of hcl the patient may have a person may have a formation of multiple ulcer okay now now let's see some fact about the gastrinoma or the zollinger ellison syndrome first of all the gastrinoma is malignant in 60 percentage of the cases it is malignant in the 60 percentage of the cases okay second thing the gastrinoma is associated with the man one syndrome it is associated with the man one syndrome site from where we can find the uh, gastrinoma or the zollinger ellison syndrome so the most common site is the duodenum the most common site is the duodenum now as we all know the g cells are found in stomach but the most common site uh, for this uh, gastrinoma will be a duodenum followed by the pancreas and followed by the stomach okay so the most common site will be a duodenum then the pancreas and then the stomach okay now in the site part there is a one triangle which is associated with this disease it is called as the gastrinoma triangle it is called as the gastrinoma triangle this gastrinoma triangle is also called as the passaros triangle it is also called as the passaros triangle okay now let's see how we can draw this triangle now here we have the liver it is the gall bladder okay and from gall bladder there will be a cystic duct which will come out and from the liver there will be a hepatic duct which will come out and both cystic duct and hepatic duct will join to form the common bile duct here we have the pancreas okay and this green color uh, structure is the duodenum d1 part of duodenum d2 and d3 part of the duodenum now in this gastrinoma triangle we'll draw one imaginary line and this imaginary line will start from the junction of the cystic duct and the hepatic duct okay we we'll start a imaginary line and this line will bisect the head and the body of the pancreas here it is the head it is the body of pancreas and the last part is the tail okay so we'll start a line from the junction of the cystic duct and the hepatic duct and we continue this line till the junction of the head and the body of the pancreas this is the first line now the second line we will draw it will start from the junction of head and the body of pancreas till the dissecting part of the duodenum the d2 and d3 part of the duodenum and then we will join this line then we will join this line so we can see that there is one triangle formation this triangle this triangle is called as the gastrinoma triangle and this is the site from where this tumor or this disease usually arises okay now let's see what will be the clinical feature in this condition now as there is increased level of hcl so the person will have a ulcer formation okay so patient will complain of the epigastric pain the patient will complain of the epigastric pain okay now till now uh, you have you may have one doubt that all the clinical feature the side part everything resembles the peptic ulcer so how we can distinguish clinically 
uh, between the peptic ulcer and the zollinger ellison syndrome the distinguishing part here is the diarrhea it is the diarrhea now what happened in the zollinger ellison syndrome there will be a diarrhea but this diarrhea is very uncommon in case of peptic ulcer okay now let's see why there is diarrhea in case of zollinger ellison syndrome okay now as the level of hcl as the level of hcl is very high so what happened normal person in the normal person in the duodenum we have one gland which is called as the brunner's gland we have the brunner's gland and this brunner's gland will neutralize neutralize the acid it usually neutralizes the acid but in case of zollinger ellison syndrome but in case of the gastrinoma what happen this gland will not able to neutralize the acid the neutralization will not be occur in this condition so what will happen there will be in more and more level of hcl there is more concentration of the hcl in the body and what this hcl will do this hcl what it, this hcl will do let's move to next page there will be more and more hcl and this hcl will damage the pancreatic enzyme it will damage the pancreatic enzyme okay now when the pancreatic enzyme are damaged the digestion of food will be hampered the digestion of the food will be hampered okay so the patient will have a symptom or the patient will undergo mal absorption mal absorption okay now due to this mal absorption the patient will suffer a diarrhea so it is this is the reason by which the patient of zollinger ellison have a diarrhea okay and this diarrhea is a distinguishing you can distinguish the peptic ulcer from the zollinger ellison syndrome uh, by the by this diarrhea okay now let's see how we'll diagnose this condition okay now the diagnosis of this condition is mainly based upon your two method here we have the investigation of choice and we have the other modalities which we can perform now in the other modalities we can check for the first we can do the endoscopy we can do the endoscopy and what we can find in the endoscopy that there can be a giant duodenal ulcer there can be a giant duodenal ulcer okay now the endoscope will only tell whether there is a ulcer or not but it will not tell about what is the cause of this ulcer okay so if you find the giant duodenal ulcer the next thing that we can do is the we can do the urease th test we can do the urease test or we can do the urea breath test urea breath test okay in this urea breath test if it is negative it is usually done for the h pylori infection if it is negative means there is a no h pylori there is a no h pylori infection okay there is no h pylori infection now the third test that we can do here is the fasting gas fasting gastrin level we can check the fasting gastrin level fasting gastrin level okay we will check for the amount of the gastrin level which is present in our body these are the other modalities that we can perform in case of the gastrinoma now let's see what will be the investigation of choice the investigation of choice for the zollinger ellison syndrome it will be the secretin stimulation test it will be the secretin stimulation test okay in the secretin stimulation test we will give this secretin by the iv route okay and we check the level of gastrin if it is increased or not okay this will be the investigation of choice for the gastrinoma okay now let's see what will be a treatment part okay so the treatment part we have two methods in the treatment either we can manage this by medically we have the medical management and on the other hand we have the surgical management now in the medical management part the drug of choice will be the ppi the drug of choice will be ppi for example the omeprazole okay and the surgery the, the indication of surgery will be that if the size of this uh, ulcer is more than 2.5 then we will perform the surgery okay so this is the treatment part of the zollinger ellison syndrome and this is all about the zollinger ellison syndrome i hope you have understood this topic uh, thank you so much